And this is the build OGM call for the last day of August 2021. September begins tomorrow, despite everything we might do. Um, cool. I tried to I tried to send uh, a zip file. Yeah, there's a the... problem with the server. Oh, okay. Uh, so I shouldn't keep trying. Only. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I thought it was a problem on my end. It's like, it's not me, it's you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, sounds great. Hey, Hank. Hey, hello. How's the beach? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, nice and wet. Oh. Lots of little tidal bugs. Yeah. It's where uh, I often like to go in reflective moments. Hey, Stacey. I can't get to the real one. I like the photo anyway. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I'm going to do in screen sharing what I couldn't do by file sharing, and I'll, I'll be able to share them also. And then I kind of forgot to scan the image. But what I've, I was trying to draw the mosaic in Miro and failing. Uh, so, so to back up a little bit, uh, last call, we figured out yesterday on the Free Jury's Brink call that, I, that it, was, it was on this call last week that we ended up talking about project dashboards and then having a mosaic so that we could figure out which project was a tile that would fit several different projects and how that all worked. Yeah. And I'm realizing right now that the illustration I'm about to show you doesn't fulfill a piece of what I was hoping it would, but, I, but it, it can easily get there. Um, so I tried doing this in Miro and I was like, I'm just not good enough to do this in Miro. And you'll see why in a second, uh, partly because the approach I ended up having was of a multi-plane camera. So uh, basically, uh, you know how they shoot cartoons? Yeah. yeah. So they, they invented, I think Disney or somebody back then invented a, a, a multi-plane camera where you put, a, you put a camera up top and then you have a bunch of uh, uh, layers of animation that you can put in. And the, the, bo the bottom layer would be the, the, the landscape in the background. The middle layer would be a car going by in the background. The next yep. layer up would be your actors in the, in the foreground. And the next layer up might be subtitles or something else. Then you shoot, move everything, shoot, move everything, <clears throat> et cetera. But, but the multiplane camera kind of acts as a, as a way of aggregating a bunch of different things into a single image. And with that, I think, what I, I think the best way for me to do this is to screen share. Let me get the uh, first of them up ba, ba, da, ba, and let me see which, yeah, let me go here for starters. Nope, I don't mean that one. I mean this one. Okay, so uh, ba, 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 share screen and here we go. <laughs> so, um, so the first one is organizations that, this, this is the view from the, from the top of OGM's mast. And the view will be different from each entity's mast, depending on who you, whom you've intersected with, whom you're working with. But sort of also oh, OGM is kind of larger here. And I put a couple of the OGM entities in here, story threaders and map whisperers as possible guilds or whatever the name for guilds is going to be. Uh, WTW is weaving the world and weaving the world feeds the big fungus, which is in the generative commons. And th that's all language that should be familiar to anybody who's been part of the OGM calls. And the, the big fungus and the generative commons feed off of massive wiki, which is part of massive human uh, uh, interaction project, uh, which also has this idea of context weavers. Uh, and then uh, Stacy's show game, game show is over here. Vincent's trove is here. Uh, there's kind of a network of network and sense weavers and pyragogy over here. Uh, Garden world factor, climate web, you'll recognize community food systems and Klaus, Jack's topic quests. And they're not like topic quests should be closer to hyper knowledge, uh, should, et cetera, et cetera. So my apologies if they're not uh, close enough. Go ahead, Mark Antoine. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the topic quest is an organization. I, I think let's distinguish projects and organization. Topic um, quest is an organization. It's got many projects. One of them is SenseCraft, which is its own thing. And the other is the, um, I'm not sure how to call them exactly, but the, the, knowing, the, the, the knowing gardens. And those are closer to hyper knowledge, I guess. Okay, good, good. And I think that distinguishing those things will make for clarity in the diagram, et cetera, et cetera. So, so this is a layer, then there's a layer of humans. And so this layer, if you put this on top of the other layer, you'll see that Klaus is in uh, the, co the community food systems, Jack is in Topic Quest, Dave is in the regenerative collab, uh, Marc-Antoine, you're on hyper knowledge, 
uh, and I didn't put Idea Lumen, I should have. Uh, Jamie is involved in Canonical Debate Lab with a couple other people. Uh, Bentley is here with Gullybot and other sorts of things. And I was just trying to put the projects that are going through our ecosystem, but here are some of the participants. Here's Geary, Kevin, Charlotte, and Joe uh, in Piragaji, Doug in Garden World Politics, uh, et cetera. You'll, you'll recognize these names. So I kind of think of this as the topmost layer and then organizations below it so that the people kind of map into the organizations. And then below that, um, are, is, let me go to organization. Uh, and this is a piece of what Pete was, was describing as how we do what we do. So this is, uh, and this is not as, com as complete as it should be, but uh, here are some raw tools that, that create maps that, uh, and factor that filters information that we then share through Zooms, Google Groups, and Mattermost. Uh, some of which gets captured also into GitHub repos. Uh, massive uh, human intelligence project has the massive wiki. There's an OGM wiki. There's a, a nascent projects dashboard, and there's a nascent at some point OGM fund that helps funnel money into this. This this uh, this layer should include the rhythm of our meetings, the responsibilities, and other kinds of pro sort of project organizationy uh, kind of things. But this is this is kind of how we do the work, which needs to be a a piece of the mosaic somehow. This one's maybe the most awkward layer. Um, then the projects layer, these pieces are meant to overlay on the organizations uh, in where they fit between the organizations. So between the hyper-knowledge project and OGM is a project hopefully fundable that probably needs to be defined much more than this, but I just called it hyper-knowledge claims. And maybe it's a piece of claims or some way of manifesting claims or an API to hook into claims or something like that. But it's a, it's a, it's a bite-sized project and it fits here. Then there's a graphic reporting app that allows graphic facilitators to do deep links into uh, OGM Wiki or into you know, the different artifacts that we're talking about and the repos we're talking about. Uh, from the media aggregation that I was talking about earlier, where we're doing Zooms and all those things, there's, there would be a stream of media coming out because right now I'm putting the, uh, the Zoom recordings onto YouTube, but wouldn't it be cool if there was a media player that was smarter that understood how to sync up uh, the transcript with the video, with other artifacts and so forth. A little, a little bit like hypothesis for video, right? Um, but but, but, but right, now, right now we have media players that awkwardly, like YouTube awkwardly allows for some comments along the way. It's kind of no real good way to annotate and make, make really useful video artifacts. What if there were, what would that look like, right? <clears throat> then I put Opal here which is uh, the, uh, the massive wiki front end to make it more of an editable wiki. Uh, here are sort of multi-mapper UX experiments, which I put in as a result of the uh, uh, Free Jerry's Brain uh, challenges, which I was hoping to put out. So uh, one of them that would be fun to fund would be like, hey, UX and UI designers, <coughs> come in and tell us what, uh, what idea sex between multiple people might look like. What, what you know that that's a project that would, would be fun to fund. Then uh, here is a, how do we make uh, all those lovely pattern languages that are already out there? How do we just make them more accessible? What does that mean? I think that's a project that's not well defined at this point here, but I can see narrowing it down and, and saying, okay, how for example, how for example would we take Piragaji liberating structures, wise democracy pattern language, just those, and make them very available. Uh, through Opal and through uh, game shifting, which is another uh, project here. This is the one stimulated by Arthur Brock's game shifting idea uh, of uh, how do we, how do we, and, and the way I described it was it's an iPad app that's a frame inside of which you can drop a variety of group process techniques, a variety of maps of where we are in the process, a variety of tools like Team Kanban, those, those kinds of things sort of easily modularly fall in to this uh, group process, content and process uh, control panel app framework, something like that. And, and, I'm, and I'm borrowing Arthur's uh, uh, name of game shifting for that. So these were projects that live inside. This is the closest part to mosaic tiles. And the part that this isn't achieving quite yet but maybe it is, as I talked it through, is that the tiles ought to be doing multi-purpose for different entities that are in the ecosystem. 
right? So a, a really good tile is like a triple word score. So a really good tile does some work for a massive human intelligence project. It does some work for OGM. It does some work for hyper knowledge and it does some work for uh, Klaus and community food systems. That's a great tile. And that would be fundable, like, like we really wanna fund a multi-use a multi -use tile that has a strategic role in what we're trying to do. Uh, I, think, I think that was all the layers, entities, infrastructure organization participants projects. Yep, I think you've seen all the layers. The, the arrangement should be kind of up and down and I have a little hand-drawn thing that I didn't bring, uh, but I, it's sort of hand-drawn so that these things kind of layer through and you could then make links between them where this organization, these people from this organization are involved in this project uh, and using these aspects of our infrastructure to communicate uh, and how this works. Questions, thoughts, comments, improvements? Yes, no? Um, I'm sorry, I did miss something, which it, it's not clear to me how, like basically the OGM projects are kind of bite-sized fragments of the projects on the first, on the first page, is that right? Just um, want to be sure I get that right. OGM fundable projects, the things that OGM would, would like to help stand up by putting some money into them are, yeah. are in fact useful sub, sub projects of the, the bigger projects that are in the ecosystem. Yes. Okay. They're the, they're the places where we have overlap in function and uh, where, we're you know, where we're trying to get to. Right, right, right. I think what's really, um, wh one thing that I found interesting in uh, project management is to really understand what the, the gating, this project enables that feature in these other projects. Um, of course, <laughs> full disclosure, uh, I think that some of the hyper knowledge underpinning are relevant to a lot of stuff, but I think it's, it's true in general. It's like, what is the, uh, oh. like we spoke about little data atoms and how do we aggregate data atoms that can be useful to any projects and knowing what parts can be useful for many projects. What's the most important uh, oh yeah, that's important. Yes, I forgot a you. really important slide. I'm yeah, sorry. that's okay. Good. <laughs> I, I totally forgot. Like maybe the most important of all the of all, of all the layers. That was dumb. Um, okay, so this is sort of the technical infrastructure of how things happen. Um, and my apologies, Mark Antoine, but I think this will help you come yes. back better. Um, so on the upper left is the information flow. This is time. These are events uh, happening. And then the nuggets are basically, this was a great video that showed up in the news stream. This is an article. This is a tweet. Uh, these are all kind of events happening. Out of these events, we are pulling uh, uh, links. Uh, I should have put links here, videos, transcripts, and then clean links through uh, the, the, the Zoom link cleaner app, applet, for example. We are then at enriching these things with metadata and we're putting them into public stores, right? So, so th this whole process is kind of emerging event sense making plus other sorts of stuff uh, that leads to a shared memory. So as we put this in public stores, it becomes a kind of a shared memory. We are also taking some of these things and turning them into narratives and maps and probably other artifacts I didn't list here. And those, those would have all kinds of different forms using Kumu, using the brain, using uh, what, you know, animation tools, using whatever else. Um, those, those all become ways of seeing what's happening and telling the stories of what's happening. They look like topic maps, argumentation, debate logic, animations, et cetera. And then this wiggly line is the fungus face. This is, this is sort of when we put those into the shared memory, that's when we're crafting this, this like, like the large fungus that metabolizes this information, makes it available and feeds us all. Then somehow there's like, remember that, that cartoon where two scientists are like drawing an, a, a process on the board and there's a square in the middle and it says, you know, a magic happens. Magic happens. <laughs> exactly. So, so there's this comparing narratives and maps and there's this, there's this idea sex uh, uh, arena that happens in the middle where two people with very different ideas about how to interpret the world who've done some work on some sorts of tools about creating their narrative of why it's okay that we push all immigrants out of the country and why we're white people are being outnumbered and nah, 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 that's their narrative, right? And then, and then in this process, we have a, a, hopefully a good conversation and something useful comes out of this. This is kind of the crucible uh, of the process, I think, I'm not sure. And then this line divides the, the geeky 
news junky, hard factsy, let's represent them, tell stories side from the squishy, um, personal, interpersonal, intergroup, cultural, soft, squishy part about rebuilding trust, deep listening, bridging the cultural divide, creating safe spaces for conversations so that we can, in fact, have idea sex between people who have pretty different ideas, where, where the system, the shared memory, um, saves and represents many individual points of view that go into this comparison process that starts to kind of crystallize, that allows people to ask better questions, that allows people to set up experiments that will answer those questions, that then hopefully leads into slightly more integral or crystallized points of view that could then turn into things like policy platforms. And I, there were a couple other things I was going to put down here, but I, I forgot to, and I, I forgot to go back. So that explains this diagram, which is really essential and kind of lies in the middle. Uh, and, and the projects, the projects uh, on the project slide are trying to feed different parts of this diagram that are necessary to get this done, right? So, so, the, so the, the, the rectangle that was about here uh, of, uh, let me just go to projects. So the rectangle here of multi-mapper UX experiments is what does IDSX look like? That, that's what this project is. Uh, the group, pattern, group process pattern language is made accessible is how do we create safe spaces that have better group process technology at hand so that they can be more effective, so that they can build more trust, so that they can get past uh, bottlenecks and roadblocks that they face, right? So when a group is stuck and really needs a new group process, how do they do that? And what I'm realizing I'm forgetting here is that at the moment where they get to that point, they might need some human assistance. So what I failed to put in these, in these diagrams is there could be some professionals standing by who know how to facilitate, who know how to use mind mapping, who know how to do context weaving, who know how to do all that kind of stuff, who can then, you know, so that, so that, so when you're stuck, um, there's technology and content at hand, and there are humans at hand who are helpful also. And I forgot to represent them in these diagrams at all. Uh, although there's story threaders and a couple other things in, in the early uh, sort of organizational diagram, but they kind of belong elsewhere as well. Um, so uh, with that, I will, uh, step back, but here's the infrastructure, infrastructure slide. And these are all the, the pages I was just trying to upload through uh, Mattermost. So whenever that works, or I'll use a different, I'll just send them to you all individually or whatever. That, that is great, thank you. Uh, and yeah, the, what I'm saying is, it's a very different shape of project that goes uh, before and after the squiggly line, uh, or, or not, it's not even before and after the squiggly line. It's uh, the, the, the kind of common data bus infrastructure is a very different kind of project than the, uh, okay, let's use that data to create a visualization, which is, or let's convert this data into the data bus, or let's, you know, these are all nice, let's do this, let's do this, but having a good, intertwinkling layer is not a three-month project, though I'm beginning to break it up. Uh, I think the, the, the first step is, <laughs> as usual, the notion of identity uh, and being able to say, well, I have this thing, which is snapshot, and how does it evolve in time? Uh, because when are we speaking about the same thing? That is the most difficult problem. Interesting. Naming, naming, what is it? Naming and caching are most difficult problem in computer science. Naming is the most difficult problem in conversations. Um, and having a service that understands the shifts of meaning of a name in a, in a way that's useful, I, I think that would be a service to everybody. Um, that's my first block. Is it a three month project? I don't know. There's a lot of three month projects that build on that. Yep. But that, that's Thank you. And, and I, I think I know what you meant by the common bus, but I'm not sure. Um, but our, our current approach at what the fungus face code sort of looked like is kind of at this point, markdown files uh, in, on GitHub, uh, plus some other stuff, plus magic yeah. that happens around it. But that, that, you know, our best approach yeah, right now is to take a least common know, denominator. I'm, I'm deeply unsatisfied with that because it's, it's good for text-based, but not everything is text-based. We need database. And uh, yeah, I'm obviously looking at some JSON-LD-ish format, 
because JSON LD is easy, but it's got its limits and it's not good. Yada, 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 yada. LD for, for, the, for the civilians in the, in the group, LD is linked data and JSON yes. is, a, is a file format. So JSON LD is a, is a richer file format than Markdown that, in, that allows for linking of, of the objects. These pieces of data together. And IPLD, which is its successor on the IPFS, which and has IPFS the is the interplanetary file system. IPLD is IP linked data. In planet, uh, yeah, I'm, interplanetary I'm the acronym, data. I'm the acronym deconstructor. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. I'm so used to the. Uh, what, what was the joke about uh, in IBM was uh, abusing acronyms and uh, so much at some point they got into, and especially three letter acronyms, of course, because it's IBM. And at some point there was a memo going through the company. Don't abuse TLAs. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Which I'm everybody really... understood, of course. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, but I still, I still agree. Uh, being able to define these uh, bits of uh, where does this data live and how do, is this data transmitted and how does the bus look? I think it's extremely important. We'll okay. see. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> um, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful set of diagrams, Jerry. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I want to make sure we wait. Uh, uh, so that last slide, the, the important slide, I, I liked. Um, uh, I want to make sure we weight uh, people as much as technology. Um, so the you know trust flows and i don't know emotional states or something or um uh concerns um and um and facilitation and i had one more really good one um uh you know what what kind of narratives do we need what you know how do we how do we support each other? Um, value flows. That's what I was looking for. Um, how does value flow in in and out of the system and then within the system? Um, yeah, that might that might actually be its own layer, a little bit like you know the current maps of the oceans, right? Yeah. Um, full full agreement, Pete. Uh, can I ask you a question? When you say concerns, do you mean the layer where we take care of the concerns for building trust, or do you mean the flow of concerns between the projects, like I spoke about which project supports the, which one. And I think also uh, concerns of some projects, oh, is that going to do what I want? Is that going to deliver the concerns between projects and objectives? I think that's also, there's a project's dependencies, but also the project's worries or, or, or yeah. impedance mismatch is a layer I'd like us to. Yeah, um, those are all great. And I especially like dependencies. Um, uh, I, I was using concern as kind of a neutral word. What, it, what I really meant was worries and fears and things like that. Um, so if I'm thinking of, you know, in, in some sense, Jerry, what you've, what you've um, diagrammed is, is kind of the structural components of the OGM brain, right? The, the global mind, the mind of, of OGM. And so um, it's always, it's always tempting to kind of map a happy path, um, but you know uh, what? Um, actually, to pick one that you know that we both um, love to hate um, and maybe hate to love, uh, diversity is one, right? Um, uh, how does how does uh, OGM has a significant kind of schism or something like that that? that creates a, a diversity issue. And um, sometimes we can kind of look at it, but it, we can't look at it for very long and then we bounce off of it and go do other stuff because it's, we can't figure it out, you know, so. Um, well, I found that I, it's a digression, but, but my satisfying approach to try to do that was to try to help people who aren't like me in other settings. And then if that worked, they might come in and, and join OGM. And that hasn't worked very well so far for me. But, but that was my, my, my attempt was not to, hey, come on in and join the party. 
which would be maybe awkward, maybe not useful, maybe a waste of time, but rather, how can I help you? Really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, so that's a a bit of a coping mechanism and it's, you know, no offense if I can cite uh, armchair psychoanalyze a little bit, even though I'm not a professional. Um, It's a, it's a way of rationalizing that something has been done. Right. But I, I would judge that we're, we haven't, well, either, um, one way to proceed might be to go, eh, you know, OGM isn't very diverse. Um, uh, despite the name open, you know, it's, it's open for certain classes of individuals. And that's okay, because we partner with this other organization called, you know, uh, Galactic Federation of, of, you know, whatever. Forks, forks and elves. Um, and, you know, and our diversity is meta diversity. And it's fine that in our little, our little, um, pond it's not very diverse that that would actually potentially be one way to resolve things but but whatever we haven't resolved it right um yes. d- despite saying that we are doing stuff to resolve it it is not resolved <laughs> um and we have kind of decided not to resolve it uh, in a way um because well, we're, we've, we've decided that it's not as important as other things we've decided it shouldn't be a showstopper and we shouldn't bring all the gears to a yeah. halt for to, before we've solved this issue because it's fine, we're finding it really hard to solve. Yeah. yeah. Which is different. Yeah. I, I don't think we're ignoring it. And, uh, none, uh, that doesn't feel right, but I get what you're saying. And it, it needs to factor in somewhere here as well. Uh, so, but, and but, I, I don't mean to pick on this particular issue, but there's, a, you know, in, the, in a healthy brain, um, a healthy self-actualized OGM, you know, uh, would be healthier. <laughs> um, and so that's another thing, along with, along with technical infrastructure, kind of the, the, the sociological, anthropological uh, infrastructure is, you know, arguably more important, actually, um, even though it's harder to deal with and, and softer to feel. And, and it's easier, especially for people like us to kind of go, well, let's kind of like, let's work on the, on the tech stuff. And then the anthropological stuff will, and sociological stuff will take care of itself. Um, so several things that you said are great, and I just want to elaborate on them. Um, one of them is that like there's kind of an issue map uh, wanted here, uh, and that which factors in worries, fears, forces, other sorts of things, and and might conflate things. In which case there may be several layers of map. One of which is more about emotions moving. One of which is more about issues and forces in the environment. And then I realized, oh, the magic square, the the, the idea sex arena in the middle is where those maps basically come in for conversation, for comparison, because, and, and it's sort of this, this, this and this, this layered model then kind of eats itself or becomes a little bit recursive in sort of a fun way, where one of the layers becomes one of the narratives and maps that goes into the middle of this and then lather and repeat. As it, as it gets better, it goes out and becomes a better layer in the model, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that's interesting and exciting for me. Um, and then the flows of value, is similar to, but maybe different from flows of individuals and organizations through OGM. So how do people find their way to the place where they can uh, use their energy best in the, in the broader ecosystem? How do funds make their way through the ecosystem, which is kind of implicit here, but not explicit at all. Uh, implicit in that a project is something that is fundable and OGM fund is trying to get funded so it can fund those projects. That's, that's the only narrative that's visible here for that. Um, other other money making uh, methods, other sorts of things are not visible in these diagrams either. Um, and then the impedance match mismatches, the APIs between them or protocols between them, and the dependencies between them is really interesting as well. And it feels to me like every entity that's playing here that has projects will have its own dependency diagrams, and that and that the broader OGM diagram kind of does, but kind of, I don't know, because if uh, of the projects that I have on the projects projects layer, there's a few dependencies, but not a lot. I, and, and, and if I thought longer, harder, and started to be more granular, there would be much, many more dependencies for sure. But the ones I put there, if any one of them came to be, I would be like really happy and it would, it would not affect the other ones. The other ones could make progress on their own schedule. They're, they're not that interdependent at this moment is what I'm thinking. Uh, and I'll go back to that uh, slide just so we can stir at it, but here are the projects I had. So, so yeah, well, Opal, Opal, having Opal would be great like early, uh, but then all the other pieces, when they show up like brilliant. 
Um, so other thoughts? Hank, Stacy. Uh, I think I understand it as far as a model can understand what it's actually going to look like. But I, as far as the function, I think it, it looks great. I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming the technology all works and that when I log in with a, uh, a quest for information about uh, uh, several of the projects, I can get directed to the various places where the, there's a, 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 a thing of issues, a thing of worries, the value flow, uh, the dependence between the various ones or whatever else I'm looking for. So if that works, it looks fine to me, looks good, useful, relevant. Cool, thank yeah. you. And most of the things in this diagram at least kind of exist now. The reason this is a square and I was describing it as magic happens here is that of the things kind of mentioned here, sorta, of, except for the shared memory and the squiggly lines, um, you know, narratives, maps, topic maps, brain diagrams, whatever, videos, transcripts, these things all exist. These things, we, we're not waiting for, you know, artificial generalized intelligence to show up for those parts to work. In fact, we don't need AGI for this part to work, but we do need some magic to happen to figure out how do we get beyond two or three people who happen to have used different mapping tools. Let's say there's a Rome person who's like really fond of Rome and has built a bunch of data in Rome and me trying to have a conversation. How do we get beyond both of us in a Zoom sharing links and screen shares that which is like the state of the art now and isn't enough. Like that, that doesn't actually create the fungus very well. Right, and, and, I, and, and for that, I don't know what that next step is. I'd love to set up that experiment. I'd love to motivate people to come in and play with those, those concepts and show us what prototypes of that might look like. But, but a lot of the rest of the stuff, the Piragaji pattern language exists. It's in a book, right? But it doesn't exist in a way that puts it easily at hand for people stuck in group process, hence the project, right? Things like that. But, but, but we're not waiting for magic generally to happen everywhere. These things are kind of in many ways uh, available. I, I, think, I think there's something that's interesting in what you just said about, um, you know, Rome, this and that doesn't give me what I want. I think it's interesting for everybody to say, oh, what I want is like this, but it doesn't do that. So, and have differentiators. What is it I'm missing? What is it that's in this project that is not in other projects? Um, um. Yes, and, and Stacey, I'll go to you uh, right after I say the sentence. Um, yes, uh, I totally agree. And then there's the complicating factor that I think when Harlan, who is the inventor of the brain, goes and talks to six brain users, the visions of what they'd like next as the feature set are completely divergent. Like there, there is very little convergence among brain users, which I think is part of his pickle over time because he's added a thousand features to the brain, most of which I have not touched, do not use, do not want, just make the thing like slower and clumsier. Uh, there's a calendar buried in the brain. I don't know why it's not, you know, none of that's happening. Um, so yes, go ahead, Stacey. I'm wondering if it might not be useful to focus on the hypothetical situations where that human component comes in. Like you mentioned that you would need humans. That would speak to what Pete's talking about with diversity because by nature, those people are going to be connected to more diverse populations. In particular, in particular, we treat as our primary and most important clients people in other communities uh, who are not like us. I mean, I think, I think, I think where we aim this thing really, really matters, and the issues we look at really, really matter. And the reason I'm excited about the the issues and forces layer of this, which is kind of one of the beginning maps, is that is that um, modeling and diving into the kinds of struggles that are, that are just out there that are not being paid enough attention to is a way for us to kind of synthesize and bring together a bit uh, some of the issues that we're talking about here. I don't know if that was very clear, but, but I'm trying to say that, that where, where we aim our energy and attention matters a lot uh, in terms of how this plays out. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is if we had some hypotheticals of that, 
like somebody like me, I'm kind of blindfolded. Like I'm in this conversation, but I'm blindfolded because I don't understand a lot of the technology. So I can't make that connection between what I know and what you might need, you know, to hear from me. Right. But if we had some examples that sort of like opens up the flood, oh, I get it. Oh, and it could work like that. And Yeah, in, in product management, we would call those use cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Use cases, user stories, and prototype, paper prototypes even, I mean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other thoughts? So, so I think yeah, there's a I couple wonder, layers would, to add. Go ahead. I wonder uh, what else. Uh, what else do you think about this effort, Stacy? Oh me. Um, yeah. I'm, first of all, I got cut off in the middle. My computer decided to restart, oh, so shoot. I missed part of it. Um, the only, and this is just like an intuitive thing. It's no real thought into it. When I see the respect part in the top right hand corner. I kind of want to move it over the center and I like and have it like <laughs> part of sprinkled everywhere, but more in the center. Like I almost imagine like a green room, like that's where that's where people come as they're walking through to the next room, sort of like a pass through. Is that is that is that kind of like a core value or something, maybe? Well, yeah, because I don't think that trust comes in a, tr I think trust is constantly being built. I think trust is part of every conversation and every decision. I, I was reading today, trust comes from interdependence. So if you, if you don't need to depend on somebody, you don't need to trust them and you don't. So And you don't you make the out. effort. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and a part of what we've done to our society is we've um, outsourced all those interdependencies and we've cut all the ways in which people used to do things for you know, and with each other. It's like, that's not my job anymore. There's a government agency for it, or uh, there's a service you can pay for to do this or whatever. And so all those little threads, all the little threads that made the fabric of society have been snipped uh, over time. I, I feel like we've also, self-service self web apps, I think, have warped people's brains over the past like 10 years. Because you can push um, a button and get a thing? Well, partly that. The, the thing that I really think about is, is Google's customer service mantra, right? Um, you, don't, um, you don't talk to a bot. You don't talk to a person. Google just, either, either your Google stuff works um, or it doesn't. And the way that they do customer service is proactively by watching millions of people using their stuff and instrumenting it such that they understand where people are getting stuck and why they can't use something. So it, it magically kind of fixes itself, um, but there isn't, they've also built, they've also excluded any way to actually do, you know, um, mediated service with, uh, with the Google, you know, the Google machine. So well, can you say mediated service in different words? Well, yeah, customer service. Yeah, you know, one, one on I, one. I can still human, call my bank. It, it's not very satisfying necessarily to call my bank and, and work through something. But right. at least I'm talking to a person and I can right. appeal to them and, and a little bit of their intelligence and I can appeal to them and their manager. Yeah. Um, you know, or I can appeal to their customer service department. Yeah. Google's model is really, you know, there's a, there's a human fed AI that is taking care of you. Um, and that's good enough. You know, there's a, there's a couple of ghosts behind the curtain that are doing a good job of watching what you're doing and trying to smooth the road ahead of you, but it's, and, but it's hard to talk to the ghosts. And I feel like we end up with learned helplessness that way, because, you yeah. know, you, you cannot, it, there isn't, you, you learn not to find help. Right. Um, I, this, uh, I, I said this better in another call someplace else, but, um, a, a thing that I observe, I, I feel like there's a change in the past, you know, 20, 25 years. Um, it used to be, uh, we had this thing called netiquette um, and uh, people who were getting online um, got a little bit of uh, schooling about, you know, this is how you do stuff. This is how you don't do stuff. You know, we have body language, even in digital disembodied space. Um, and so you, there's things like, you, you know, we used to, you know, 
um, you would you would say things like don't feed the trolls or you know, hey, uh, the subject line on an email should reflect the contents of the um, of the email that you're sending. It shouldn't be a marker of a thread. This is another thing Gmail broke, by the way. You know, they they went so hard after just keeping things in threads that they taught people that, oh my gosh, don't change the subject line. Otherwise, everything's going to get all confused and we won't be able to tell what we're talking about, which, you know, back in the day, we used to do that kind of stuff. So we had a culture of, of interdependence and, and, and human culture that was, you know, specifically interdependent, specifically caring about each other as we were moving through space, specifically tamping down uh, antisocial behaviors. And, and we have largely, and, and even things like, um, let's, uh, the, the thing, this is gonna sound self-severing or, or like I'm butthurt um, to use a millennial term or, or something. Um, uh, even things like let's do shared note taking, right? That used to be an easier sell in the olden days. But nowadays, we have learned not to take care. Like we we just kind of charge ahead and don't care about peripheral, mm. you know, people even, because we've got this thing like, well, I'm doing my thing. I'm saving my bookmarks, or I'm pinning my whatevers, or I'm liking and favoriting. But I don't have to do any more overhead than that. I don't have to slow down and tend to the conversation. I don't have to slow down and care for individuals around me. I don't have to, you know, because it's just me and the the Machine. way I'm interacting, right? And that's all that matters. It's a weird thing, and I, I feel like it's definitely a big culture shift over the past twenty or twenty-five years. That you know, that we need to kind of grow back. We need to refigure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right, Pete. That is a huge deal. I mean, uh, I remember fighting in my ex organization when I was pushing some of the concepts of idea looms. Like threads matter. Of course, we've forgotten that threading matters because everybody's doing chat and chat doesn't have threading. And uh, it's okay to not have threads when you have two people conversation or three, but when you have a large number of people on a listserv, it's very important who's replying to you. And th th we've lost a lot of capacity with, uh, and, but one thing I, I want to get into, and I, I so, so, so right about Google's, uh, no person culture. But the other axis of that is that my reaction as a programmer is I want to control the information and software so I can do things better if I'm not happy, right? And that's totally a programmer's reaction. Uh, uh, and that's not a good reaction for uh, a lot of people because they won't do it, which is fine up to a point. Uh, but there's this huge movement for everybody owning their own data. I don't know how many people are willing to uh, manage uh, their own data and the permissions and this and that because it's a learning curve. On the other hand, I do think it's important, like let everybody have their own data. And it does mean there's this uh, culture to impart, uh, to impart as well of how do you manage your own data? How do you... Uh, pass it through something that will make it usable like a process without losing control over it. Mm -hmm. and, and we've all learned to just give away our data to processes that will make it look nice to us. So actually- Or, or are, do nice things for us, but are, no. oops. Yeah, uh, no, 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 I'm, I, I, was, I was mostly done. I, I, I'm just saying there, this, is, this is a culture problem and you're right to point it at that level. And, 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 and the only answer we've had is a tech answer. And I don't know if a better answer than that because I'm a techie. <laughs> so I just wanted to add that our data is kind of being hoovered up behind us. It, you know, organizations are dumpster diving on our data and not telling us what they're doing with it, not giving us access to where they're storing it. Uh, all of that is happening you know, in, in the stalker economy or surveillance capitalism behind the curtain yep. or behind the walls. Um, but also we've lost the culture of feeding a commons in common and of what it means to collaborate to create that common. 
We've also lost uh, abundance mindset and replaced it with scarcity mindset, which means uh, we see things as zero sum. We see things as the way you make money is you sequester ideas and data and you sell access to them. All of these are sort of part and parcel of the, of the bag, of, bag of tricks and, and ideas that we're living inside of that have been completely normalized. And a part of what we'd like to do is start, and I think this, is, this goes to our generative commons calls on Wednesdays, uh, to start uh, you know, a culture of abundance, a culture of sharing and curating, a, a culture of mutual responsibility, a culture of interdependence, a culture of uh, you know, taking care and being aware of other communities, other people. Uh, and I think there's tons of people trying to work on that. They just, we just have different language for it and different means for doing it and haven't been very successful yet. Um, but if you, if, you, if you were to parachute down into communities around the world, you would discover them doing aspects of this really, really, really well on the ground all over the place. Like, like this exists in lots of places. It's just not the dominant framework or the dominant way we do stuff. Um, before uh, a question, a question. Uh, I mean, you say there are communities around the world doing these things really well. Uh, are there also, I mean, I'm assuming you mean in the offline world, do you think well, there online are too. or online to both? Yeah. Okay. They're using, they're using online tools to coordinate in the real world. I mean, a lot of these are geographically close. They're, they're sort of location sensitive. Uh, in part because they've met before in person and they have they've built trust or they or they have shared resources that they're managing together or whatever. But they but there's certain but many of them are certainly um, highly skilled at using uh, electronic tools as coordination or memory or whatever else. Yeah, Idea Loom was very much inspired by the practice of one such person who learned from the IEEE and extended that in. Uh, communities like one was he, at some point he was writing a book on the history of currencies and he got a lot of people from Africa and that was significant because that was before the cell phone craze in Africa so people were still on listservs and he did this listserv curation as a practice to get people involved and he found that giving people like people are too not necessarily available to follow the whole listserv conversation, but if you would send them a kind of, okay, here's what happened in the past three weeks as a kind of outline of highlights, it would help to keep people hooked on the conversation and contributing. Uh, that was pure human curation and community curation and dynamics. And he got a great dynamic that way and a great, uh, uh, and, and people coming up with, he said there were three successive Copernican revolution where we said, oh, money's about this. And oh, no, actually it's about this. And it, oh, no, it's actually, it's about this. Because of this, the depth they could go in because of this process. And that could, was the origin could, of Idealum. Could you share who that was? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Jean-Michel Cornu, uh, oh. he's, uh, he has a blog where he explains his practice in video. Oops, we just lost your audio. Because I was typing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but... Thank you. I'll give you... Huh. Collective intelligence. I don't know that I know, Courtney. Yeah, he's not in my brain. He will be later today. <clears throat> um, before we run out of, oh, uh, Pete, we can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me tangentially, uh, uh, unlocking a, a, a collaboration uh, mechanism. It reminds me of Jack Herrick and uh, WikiHow. Um, it, it took them a while to get, get the rhythm down, but Jack kind of unlocked how you how you get people to collaborate nicely together uh, in WikiHow, and I would I would judge kind of in a more healthy way than Wikipedia, even though mm -hmm. Wikipedia has got you know a lot of good about it. Makes sense. Um, we're almost at the top of the hour, and I just wanted to share something that isn't 
Well, it, it's only it's part tangentially germane to what we we're talking about. I just want to share it with you for a moment so you've seen it. Which is uh, one of the things I did recently was I went and looked at all the stuff I've got in my bag of tri tricks around trust. Um, and I, at first, it was a bunch of post-its on the wall behind me. I took a picture of that. I then mirrored that in Miro, and then I started actually trying to sort of link it. And, and this document where all the blue underlined things are actually links to websites or documents or videos or video playlists. So this is kind of instrumented for all of this. Uh, it's, it's, it's just my look at what I've got, but it's, these are a bunch of assets that, that live in the world um, that are usable, reusable. All the OGM related stuff is kind of in the center here. And then design from trust is nearby. Uh, these orange things are workshoppy things I've created. <clears throat> um, my, you know, Jerry's brain and inside Jerry's brain and picture's brain are down here on the right. Uh, uh, the possibilities of, of a book, what are the chapters of a book uh, over here on the left. Uh, down below, I've got uh, the implications of design from trust on different industries. Uh, I love education, for example, and a bunch of other things. And in the middle are little, little sort of nuggets like uh, we've been suffering from a young overdose. What are the next two stacks? The cake of wealth. <clears throat> Uh, assume good intent, a bunch of other sorts of things. Uh, happy to go into this in more detail, um, but just wanted to share it with y'all. And I think this will work, but I'll put the link here and tell me if you can get into it if you want to. because I have a free account on Miro, which I think means that all my boards are public anyway. And I think I only get to do three boards at a time. So this one got complicated on purpose. And I was trying to figure out how to do layers in Miro so that I could step through what I just did on paper with you. <clears throat> and I, I just totally got stuck. And, and I think, I don't know that Miro does layers. I know that many other drawing tools do layers nicely. I'm not usually good at layers. I'm terrible at like remembering what was on what layer and turning them on and off. But I also kind of want the ability to, to manipulate the layers as if I were holding a multi-plane camera in front of me and, 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 and like walk through it that way rather than there's a checklist with layers, right? I, I like the physical experience of what maps to what and then like three-dimensional chess or like some, you know, seeing, seeing the layers like this and then seeing that Pete is part of Massive Human Intelligence Project is working on this project that fits here in, in the web that is part of this force, you know, th that kind of mapping would be super, super interesting and generative. And that's more than just layers. That's actually sort of connections between layers, which that uh, I don't know many tools that actually support that at all. That would that would mostly be done in a in a drawing tool. You know, just visually, you'd make links, and then it would just be a drawing tool. So you wouldn't actually sort of, if you were lucky, you would have layers of objects that can interact, etc. But likely not. Many drawing tools, and I think I didn't check Figma. I I, I do I still use good old uh, OmniGraphle, uh, but often you can have connections between objects in different layers. And they're live connections, meaning if I move the object, the connection will follow. Is that what you mean, or do you mean something more than that? Um, I think I mean that, but I, I, I think I also, I mean, you can put sort of links across layers, but I want to see the links in a, in a multi-layered view point of view. I, I want the layers not just to be artifacts, but to be part of the visualization, part of the, the usefulness of, of, the, of, the, of the shared diagrams. Where really, right? you, you want to see the source and the, and the sink of the... Yeah, both sides of the trip of the connection. Yeah, I and then you, you kind of want to take the layers and turn them sideways and be able to look at them in isometric or something like that. Yep, yep. And I don't know a tool to do that. Anymore. No. What I, what I would tend to want mostly is filtering by relation type. Yes, and and then if you if you could if you could peel away stuff if you could do some some set operations some filtering other kinds of stuff through the visual. That gets super interesting because then I can see all the things that you care about that you're interested in and how they map. I can see your path or Stacy's path through all the layers, right? That, that gets really, really fun. That, that is totally doable in, um, in OmniGraphle, but it's a pain in the butt. 
Because Omnigraph will let you turn on and off uh, an, an object with a filter? It lets you turn enough a layer, right? So what if you could, I think it's possible to say, take, you can say, take all objects of this type, like all arrows and put them on one and select them. And then you could put them on one layer mm -hmm. fairly easily. Now, what's interesting is if I want to do it by type and you can have objects by type, like take all the red arrows, put them on one layer, put all the blue arrows in another layer. And then you could be able to turn on and off. Layers. Interesting. Yeah, Stacy. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I think dig life had a way of like we could click on a person, you could see all their connections. They're using Kumu, I think, for that. Yeah. Um, dig life is big on Kumu because Christina is like a black belt in Kumu, and she's done maps of communities, who knows whom. Also, force maps of like the food system in the gorge and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm familiar with uh, them using a Kumu which doesn't give you the layers that I'm talking about here. It gives you a bunch of other stuff. Kumu is a really powerful tool. Um, and Christina and Jane and Jean Bellinger are my black belt go-tos for, for how to use Kumu well. Jerry, that mirror board uh, doesn't seem to be shared. Uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Let me uh, blah, blah, blah. invite board and team. Team can access copy invite link. Let's see if this works. Thanks for checking. Uh, try that link. <laughs> Much messier link. A friendlier link, of course. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Yeah, that works. Fabulous. Thank you. Oh. Now that my computer restarted, I can click on links again. Remember, Ooh. I told you I wasn't able to do that. Now I can. Yeah. Sweet. It's a good practice every couple of days to just restart your computer, even though every couple of days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every couple of days, Stacy, it cleans things up. Okay. And it gives yeah, you back, and it gives you back all the features that fall off as you, uh, as you use your computer and get it exhausted and, and tangled up in its in its underwear. Just reboot as you get to sleep. <laughs> As a programmer, I would say do a cron a cron reboot on <laughs> at, at four o'clock at four a.m. <laughs> which which means uh, set 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 a task like an alarm that automatically reboots your machine every night at four a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so you wake up to a nice clean machine. As we're coming to the maybe the end of this call, I uh, also want to let you know, um, uh, CSC Matamos, the chat server is going to be down uh, some this day today on and off. It needs a reboot and, and to refresh. And it needs a little love and petting. Yes. That's good. Love that. Um, cool. Anything else for this call? That, that was a bunch of stuff, but thank you. And and I think there's a layer or two that we've just described that needs that I'll draw and, and scan and add to the zip file. And then I'll try to, you know, whenever whenever you give me a thumbs up, Pete, that it's a, that, that, that I can share files to the server, I will, I will do that. Um, and we'll go from there. Any other thoughts from, from this call? Uh, good work, Jerry. Thank Thanks you. All. It, it's, it's, nice, it's nice to have a diagram that starts speaking to the flows and the objects and the people and stuff like that. So anyway, yep. we've, had, we've had pieces of this. And then, and then to think about, okay, what parts of this can be modeled in Trove or Massive or what, that, that's fun. So on from here. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Ciao.